when you talk about the Marx family, the Marx family is really a little group of families. It's a little bit complicated because there's two marriages, but uh, we'll start by a Mrs. Dodds. Um, she was nay Stoddard and she married a Mr. Dodds. They had three boys and they were Robert, Stoddard and Joseph Espy. Mrs. Dodds was widowed and had these three young boys. She came out from Scotland where Mr. Dodds had died and they were coming out on the ship. And C.F. Marx had got a job as the ship's doctor to come back to Australia. So they met and they got married fairly soon after they arrived back in Australia. So he married the widow with three young boys and then they had, fairly soon after, four more children. And that was Alec, Ted, Idris and Carl. So it's, it's a mixture of those families that, that we're talking about when we talk about the Marx family. I'm Margaret Ward, a big sister of uh, Stephen Tong. Our grandfather was Alec Marx. Stephen and I were executors of the will of Patricia Marx or Elizabeth Nesta Marx, Patricia being her nickname. And part of that estate was this collection of letters uh, from Ted, Espy and Alec during World War I. I did not know the value of the letters and so we called in a consultant, Faye Schutt, and she talked about them as a very important story in Australia's history, particularly Brisbane's history. In a way, the uh, Marx family lived in the same house, or members of them did, on Wickham Terrace for just on 100 years. And it was a big house, 20 rooms, and they kept things. They didn't have to throw them out, and they, um, some of them collected things. So uh, we have a, a very large archival collection. It says a lot about their lives and how people, their sort of position lived at the time. The greatest interest, I think, particularly at this time, is the, the, the World War I letters and the correspondence. It was almost like a conversation between a lot of people because you had Alec writing letters to his father and his father responding and, and Ted writing letters to his wife and Ted writing to his father and his father writing back. That particular part of the collection, the letters, became very important, really. In fact, we had not foreseen that relevance at the time. So we had the three doctors. Alec and Espy were both heading from Australia and Ted was still studying medicine in Dublin. Ted, upon finishing his medical degree, wanted to join the Australian Army, but it was impossible at that time to join unless you embarked from Australia. So he joined the English Army. Alec and Espy uh, were both at Gallipoli. Alec was there on the first day. And they would sort of uh, see each other and pop into the dugout to say hello or have afternoon tea together sometimes. And they would all report on each other. Then when they went off to France and they were very close together, always different regiments, but basically they would see each other very often. And the interesting thing about the correspondence is that there would always be mentions about the brothers, how they're going. You know, the news you'd get by the letters was not just for the immediate family, but for friends and, you know, cousins and so on. You had to be a bit careful writing to CF because Idris wrote to Nesta at one stage and she said, you've got to realise that when you write a letter to Dad, he immediately opens it and he reads it aloud to whoever's there. So if you, there's something you don't want read aloud to everybody, you need to think about that. And so they did write to their father, the next letter is going to be a private letter. I think what interests me is the way that the characters came out in, in the correspondence. Both Alec and Ted were very in, interested in, in nature and trees and so on. So on the first letter from Gallipoli, just a couple of weeks after the landing, the letter describes the landing, you know, 
mentions names of people that people at home would know and send their regards to so-and-so and so-and-so did a very good job. But the last third of the letter just described where they were and the types of trees and the views and things like that. Because I think that for some of them at home, that might have been more interesting than what was happening on the wall. What's interesting about the letters is they are very subdued. Uh, there are some comments around how terrible it is and the carnage that was happening, but they were very subdued. I think this was because they were obliged to do that. Also, I think it was the culture of the time. Uh, so one would read comments like, I wish this would end, or I wish I was in another place where we now know how terrible it really was. And I do wonder what happened to the three men when they got back, because not only were they unable to tell the full story in the letters, they weren't really able to do so when they got home either. The first letter by Alec from, uh, from Gallipoli is very interesting because he said in there that you'll be very proud of what the Australians have done today and was to me that was extraordinary because I always think of you know the, the patriotism of Anzac Day being a later thing but he was somebody within three weeks realising what an incredible job the Australians had done. Throughout the other correspondence his comments like the referendum, the, the referendum against conscription and really how disappointed they were at the results of that. That they were, they were there, they felt that there should be you know, conscription and that this is a good cause, a horrible cause, but a good cause. But just a comment that this, you know, is disappointing that that's what's happened. Well, I think it's um, interesting to read the few letters from Espy. Uh, one got a picture of him as a serious man and a man who worried about things. And it was Espy that I think suffered mentally more than the other two. Espy was wounded. He recovered from that, but they repatriated him to Australia at that point. And uh, he was concerned about that because he thought he should be there with the others. He felt that he hadn't been pulling his weight in the war, but we do know that um, that the carnage both at Gallipoli and then later were just horrific and there would have been terrible decisions for each doctor to make. We understand that Espy committed suicide in 1930 without leaving a note. A terrible tragedy, a loss of a very good man. I'd like the three men to be remembered as men who did not like war, who got no gratuitous pleasure out of serving, but did their bit honourably and came home and tried very hard to get on with their lives. So I pleased my family wrote letters and some voraciously <laughs> because while I'm sure they weren't thinking of it at the time it it has allowed a record of how very ordinary men managed in extraordinary circumstances to do a very difficult job. <laughs>